Well, by now, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that Alder Lake has launched. Alder Lake is Intel's newest CPU. Intel and MSI sent me an i9 and an i5. Very impressive. The i9, hands down, the fastest gaming chip you can get right now. It has monstrous single core performance and ties or exceeds multi-core performance when we're talking about 16 cores and a desktop. And the i5 is just a monstrous CPU. The i5, at $300, you get 10 cores. Yeah, the platform's a little more expensive, but good lord. But this is the i7. Intel didn't send me this. I bought it. It's eight performance cores, just like the 12900K, but it's only four efficiency cores. The 12900K is eight efficiency cores. Is four efficiency cores worth $200 difference in the price. Well, I've got the platform here set up. I've got the MSI Supreme 3090. I've got the ML360 Core Liquid and I've got the Z690 Unify from MSI. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> Isn't that the clickbait headline? Isn't the, the answer to a clickbait headline always no? Well, okay, this is the shortest review in history. The i7, save the $200 and get a better motherboard. You don't need the i9, especially if you're gaming. The only time that you might maybe want the i9 is just for the extra cores for background tasks. If you're doing a lot of background tasks and $50 per core doesn't sound unreasonable, then by all means, go for the i9. It's gonna use more power than the i7 or the i5 and uh, run hotter and need better cooling and you're gonna need a better motherboard because of the aforementioned more power, better cooling. The i7, I think this is the sweet spot. It is really, it's the higher end chip this generation. Okay, so the, the, the i5, 10 cores for $300 for i5, that's unprecedented from Intel. I've never seen Intel do that in a history of ever. So like for $300, that's kind of the deal of the century. But I feel like Intel's holding back. I feel like there's another not 10 core i5 that's coming that still has those performance cores and it's going to be even cheaper than $300. That's the one to look for. The problem then becomes the price of the Z690 motherboard. We need a, a lower cost option. I mean, this Z690 Unify motherboard is really nice. Don't get me wrong. DDR5, PCI Express 5 in two slots, which is a really, really rare feature. Like most Z690 motherboards don't actually take the PCI Express 5 lanes and split them into two slots for high-speed peripherals. They just don't. But here, here we have the i7. And the i7, the only thing that you're really giving up is a little bit of clock speed and four efficiency cores. And for the gaming benchmarks, it shows virtually zero difference. It's within margin of error. The differences that there are are really down to clock speed differences, but on that 12900K, that 5.3 gigahertz thermal velocity boost, that's fleeting at best. So you're not gonna be able to feel a difference between the i7 and the i9 in any kind of gaming scenarios. And when you're doing rendering, you know, if you're doing an hour long render, the i9 might be able to complete it a little quicker, but you save $200. If it was me, I would probably rather put the $200 toward a nicer motherboard. I'm on the fence with DDR5 though. DDR5 is so much more expensive than a good kit of DDR4. It's really hard for me to really say one or the other. DDR5, of course, is, is more you know future-proof, future-compatible. If you have a fear of missing out in the future, you'll probably buy DDR5. But from a practical standpoint, DDR4 with the i7 and a lower cost, 250-ish dollar motherboard was probably the best deal right now. You see, right now, the i9 12900K is around 630, 40 dollars, something like that. It's supposed to be, you know, like 590 MSRP, but it's hovering around 640. This i7 you can get all day long for about 420. Ah. And then of course the i5 10 core is around 300. That is incredibly aggressive pricing for Intel. Again, Intel doesn't do that very much. Where they're making up a little bit of that, probably, is in the chipset cost. You see. Motherboard manufacturers also have to pay for Z690 chipsets. So it feels like when we're looking at, you know, the features of the motherboard versus competing features on a competing platform, gosh, those motherboards seem a lot less expensive. Of course, 
there is no competing motherboard that has PCI Express 5. But then also, of course, there is no GPU right now that's PCI Express 5. So, you know, you can turn that into whatever kind of an argument you want, and it doesn't really matter. But enough rambling. Well, let's actually take a look at the benchmarks. As we go through the benchmarks here, you can see there's pretty much no difference in gaming performance. I'm gonna say that there's basically zero gaming performance. So you probably don't need the i9. If you wanna go for the monster P-Core performance, which is to be sure, I mean, you, if you want that close to 2000 single thread Geekbench score, you can get that from the i7, no problem. You don't need the i9 for that. And at like $420, that's pretty mind blowing. So save some money, maybe join the level one Patreon or float plane. I don't know, if you wanna argue with me or uh, you know tell me how wrong I am or something like that, come to the level one forums because that's where I'm hanging out. The only other real argument here is that this platform, whether i7 or i9, does kinda need some beefy cooling. You're gonna be spending a little bit on a good cooler to keep the chip from thermal throttling if you're running it full tilt all the time. If you're gaming, using regular, normal gaming workloads, that's much less true. In fact, if you uh, limit the number of watts that the i7 uses, it is only a little bit less efficient than the competing platform in terms of compute per watt. But if you let it open up, you can really, you can let it open. I mean, the, the i9 will happily choke back 241 watts plus. You know, it, it was not unusual for me to see this system with the 3090 drawing well over 800 watts from the wall even before I got into any significant overclocking. The only real overclock there was my DDR5 running at 5200. Now, it's a Supreme MSI Supreme 3090 running full tilt crazy because that's what it's good at. But still, something to keep in mind. The i7 is gonna use 60 to 100 watts less depending on what you're doing. Mostly on the 50 to 60 watt range, there's a couple of things that you can do with the i9 that'll really cause it to drink the power and the, the i7 doesn't seem to happen quite as much. So just keep that in mind. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.